Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Today we're doing a drywall hatchet and this particular one has a story. So let's dive in and hang a hatchet. This is a hatchet that belongs to a friend of mine. It's actually uh, Luke, the videographer, his wife. And she found it as a kid and it was kind of a toy for her and something that she has a lot of good memories attached to. Now, they have kids running around. They thought, that'd be kind of fun to do this. But the original handle that uh, was kind of fit onto this uh, isn't quite what we want. Uh, the handle was something that was made out of whatever was around. So normally I would take the firewood and I would cut it down with an axe or a hatchet. But in this case, uh, the grain was a little bit more squirrely and I don't need to make something perfect on this. So I'm going to resaw it down to thickness. This also has a nice curve in it that will match the curve I want to put into the hatchet head. So then we can use a fro to split out even farther. And uh, this one, you can see how it slides down there, creates a split, and then you can rotate it to crack it off farther. And I'm going to break this down both sides and then we'll come into the hatchet and bring it down to its actual shape. Yes, you cannot make a hatchet handle without a hatchet handle. <laughs> uh, some of this I can do with the uh, draw knife and it would be very nice if I had a, uh, if I had a, a draw knife bench that I can work on, um, but I, I don't because I don't have that much space. So once we get it close to the shape, I'm going to draw out exactly what I'm looking for in the actual shape. And then I can work it back down closer to that. Uh, it's kind of one of these things that you take off big pieces at the beginning, you get close to it, and then you take off smaller and, and smaller and smaller items. And this one particularly had a little bit of a wild grain up towards one end, so I had to be a little more careful up there. But once I get back into the majority of the handle, it goes pretty straight. Hatchet skills are something I want to get better at. I, I'm not great at green woodworking. I haven't had much try. And this isn't actually green woodworking because this is a very dry piece of white oak. Yes, I'm working with white oak. <laughs> Yeah, I could make this out of hickory or ash or something that's uh, technically better. Um, but in this case, I'm not making something that is perfect or amazing. I'm making something that is fun, looks good, and kind of feels good. Once I get the handle close to where I want, I want to actually mark out the eye. I have this piece of lead I can stick down in there and mark it to the oval. So I want to create a shoulder on the side, and I can cut down roughly to where it is. I want to stay a little ways away from the line, but I'm just kind of creating a shoulder I can come down. We're kind of making a tenon here. Once we have the shoulder on there, then I can come to the chisel and pop it out, getting closer and closer to that. I want to make sure my grain is running the correct direction. And on one side of this, the grain is running towards it, and one side it's running away from it. So I just have to be careful when doing those, those sections to stay away from it so that I'm not splitting in towards the tenon farther. Once I get it close, you can kind of drive this down on there and see what it's running into, and it, it will mark the wood of, hey, you've got to take off more material here. And it's going to be a little bit of this rinse and repeat and get it close. I like to have a very, very tight head into the eye. Um, I find that a little bit better than using a larger wedge. Some people like to have a fairly loose head, and then you can use a bigger wedge to fit it out. Uh, this actually had a, a bubble of uh, steel from the original casting in there that was ripping it apart. So I can come into the file and smooth that out a little bit better so that it will go on. Now you can see how it's bruising the wood at some points, and other points it's not touching at all. Where it's not touching at all, I don't want to touch it. I'm only going to hit it with the rasp where it is bruising. So we'll put it on, and then mark it down, put it on, mark it down, put it on, until it goes down as far as we want it to go. Then we can come in with the saw and cut in a notch for the wedge that will go into it. This ended up being a little bit loose front to back, so we're going to have to work with that in the future. But uh, it was very, very close to what I wanted. For the rest of this, it's all about looks. I could put it together and make a functional hatchet now, but it's not going to feel very good in the hand. So it's a lot of draw knife and spoke shave and then file and rasp. I find the draw knife and spoke shave get it very, very close to the shape I want. But then I love coming in with a file and rasp and detailing it down a little bit more, getting the feel where I want. And it, anytime that my hand is regularly in contact with a piece of wood, that usually means a file and rasp is the direction to go. But as with anything in woodworking, we're always going to start from the coarse and work our way to the fine. So in this case, the coarse is the draw knife. And then we go a step finer to the spoke shave. This does the same thing as the draw knife, but it can't dive in quite as deep. And then once that gets as close to where we want, then I'm going to come in with a rasp and smooth things out and get rid of any notches or bubbles in that. And then I can come in with a file and remove those marks. On the end of this, we're going to be putting a, a small doe's foot on this. Uh, it's just a nice little touch, nothing special to it, just a look to it in a particular style. A lot of this has the grain going in wild and wonderful directions, which looks fantastic. If I were making this for a production piece that I was going to be using regularly, I wouldn't want to use this. I want to use more straight grain, and I'd probably rive it out of the piece of firewood rather than cutting it out. Uh, but this one I'm doing a lot more for the looks and for a kid who's going to be playing with it. 
So once we get it close to its shape, I'm actually going to come in with a bow sander. If you haven't seen that, I've done a few videos on it. And this kind of marks it up and you can see where you need to go back and hit some more. And then I'll hit it with a file and clean up any of those marks. Sometimes the bow sander will get me close, but it's much, much slower. And so that will actually show me where I can come in uh, with a card scraper or a file and really do that final detail work on this. And I want to make it feel good in the hand, nice and smooth and fair all the way around. And I really, really like this stage. It's something where it just comes to life and kind of gets a, a life of its own. Again, the bow sander comes in and you can see where there's any mark left over from uh, the previous tools and still needs to be cleaned up. We're going to put a slight chamfer on the edge. And then I actually want to chamfer in up here by the shoulder because this has a rounded piece at the base of the, the neck where it can drive on a little bit farther. So coming in here with a uh, gouge allows me to round this shape in and giving a place for that to go. Plus it'll add a little bit of texture at the end where I get those um, gouge marks in. I kind of like that look. So we're just going to eyeball this in close, nothing spectacular. For the sharpening on the iron, this thing needs a lot of work. It was beat up as a, uh, a kid's toy. And I'm not going to take this crazy sharp because it will be a kid's toy still. But I want to make it something that you, know, you could sink into some wood and have a little bit of fun with that. So we're going to grind it off with a piece of coarse grit sandpaper. Um, I, I do that for almost all my grinding. I find it to be faster and more efficient than actually having a bench grinder. Uh, for a lot of cases, just putting a piece of sandpaper on glass, something around 30 or 50 grit, and it can do amazing work. That's how I do most of my, uh, my plain sole flattening as well. I'm using some uh, WD-40 Specialist, this is actually a rust protector. Uh, I'll use that as the lubricant and work that down in. I'm not taking off a crazy amount on this. I just want to hit the high spots and kind of smooth it out and give it that look. And that, that's the, the look I want. Just a little bit of patina left in there. I'm not doing a huge amount. I'm only using around a 150 grit sandpaper. So I'm just making the look on it. For the wedge, I'm going to grab a piece and then split it down. And I want to find wood where it's running out and I get that nice split grain on there. I can clean it up by pushing it against another piece and chisel it down to something nice and smooth. I want to make it a little bit larger than it needs to be because I can always bring it back. I don't want it to be something that is too small. See, in this case, it's sticking out a little bit farther, so I'm going to cut it in a little ways away from the body. So we can set the chisel on here and just give it one good tap, and it'll pop loose, and that gives us our wedge. So we put the head down to where we want it. You can see how it still has a little bit of wiggle front to back, but I want to drive it on a little bit farther. You hit the back of the handle, and it drives the head in. And I'm actually working those rounded sections down into where I cut out with the gouge, and that actually works very, very well. You can see how this is very tight, and this wedge will go in to, to split out a little ways. Uh, the wedge only goes into the head about two-thirds of the way, um, so it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the shoulder. And so just slowly, tap after tap after tap, we're going to get it down to where it should be. And in this case, we're going to cut it off, leaving a little bit extra. I don't like to cut it off perfectly flush, but I am going to come in with a chisel and remove that top edge uh, just so that it doesn't split out or uh, run backwards on it. And I love that, that look on it. I don't like putting in uh, metal wedges into heads anymore. I used to do that, but I found that it, it causes more problem than it's worth. For the last little bit, because we're going to be hitting this boil in soon, I'm just going to hit it with some 400 grit sandpaper, something very, very fine. What this does is it fills all the pores with dust, and this will actually wick the oil in a little bit deeper. I've got a couple of videos uh, showing that under the microscope, and it's kind of fun to see. But uh, I love this point where this oil oil goes in and the wood just comes to life. It is absolutely beautiful, especially with this wild grain white oak. Um, <laughs> I love the look on it. I thought about doing a little bit of carving on this, but we were running out of time, and so I left it where this is at. We're going to let the oil soak in and as much as it wants, and it wanted quite a bit, so several coats of letting it soak in every 15 minutes or so. Then we wipe off any of the excess, and then I'm going to rub in the paste wax. Uh, this is stuff that I make myself. I've cut a couple videos on making it, as well as I sell it on my website. But we just rub it into the surface, let every bit work in. We're going to let it sit for half an hour, 45 minutes, and then I'll come back with a rag and polish off anything left over on the surface. And it gives it an amazing feel, gives it a little bit of protection, and uh, it's one of those, those things that once you've felt it and you've handled it, you, you want that on all the tools you handle. And just like that, we've got a functioning hatchet. This is actually a drywall hatchet, but it's more or less a kid's toy at this point. So a lot of fun and a lot of family memories. That's the way I like it. Something that's enjoyable, something that makes you think. Happy. So normally, this wouldn't be something I would do. However, Luke, my videographer, his wife, found this hatchet head when she was 10 years old, and it kind of became a girlhood 
toy fun thing and has a lot of memories connected to it. Well, the handle it was attached to was one that uh, they made back then and it was, it, 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 it's, it's not a handle, it's a stick of wood and surprisingly it held for a while but it came off and so we thought, let's have some fun. Let's take something with a bit of a memory and put something out. Now this isn't the best handle in the world for it. Uh, the oak is a little bit old and I'd rather do it out of ash or hickory but oak is generally okay. Uh, I did want to make it follow the grain, but the grain is a little bit uh, um, a little bit more crunky and split than I would normally like. But for something that's going to be on display or to hand to a kid to have a little bit of fun to hack up on something, it'll do perfectly for that. And I really like how this one came out. Having that bit of a sway with the doe foot on here just gives it a good feel, and I like how this, this came out. So, yeah. Um, Simple, quick video, only took about an hour or so, and it's one of those fun things if you ever get a head, you can hang a handle on it really quickly, and it's a great experience to try different things and play with different tools and experiment. And I always like trying different things with handles because you're never going to know what you like or what fits you. So I hope you like this. If you have any other thoughts, comments, th ideas, things that I could have done better, let me know those. I do read through all the comments, and I learn a lot from that. It really means a lot anytime people put that down there, and it helps out the channel. Uh, anytime you put a comment down below, it is worth liking this 10 times. So thank you. If you want to go even farther than that, then think about becoming a patron. These people over here are the wonderful, benevolent, gorgeous, and beautiful people over on Patreon. Because without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We're completely sponsored by you. And without you guys, we wouldn't be here. You keep the lights on, you keep the everything going on this, and thank you. If you want to find out more about that, you can go down below and think about becoming a patron or click the little join button and become a member here on YouTube. We have special perks for both. And I think that'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. I think everyone needs to have a hatchet in their house. I think that society in general would be so much better if everyone had at least one, if not more, hatchets. Uh, the reason being is if you ever have a problem with someone else, you can take this out in the backyard and bury it.